Welcome back to another episode of Day to Day with Daydream. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Daydream Johnson, serial entrepreneur and inspiring model and actor. This segment today and a lot of other ones that I'm going to do solo, I want you guys to take it as it resonates because this isn't going to be for everybody. And if you do enjoy my videos, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and even share the video. That'll really help me out a lot. Also, if you guys could leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, I believe. Yes, Apple Podcasts. That'd be greatly appreciated. Today, I want to talk about, and I came across this uh, earlier this week as I was doing some self-reflection and looking at and studying you know, behaviors of other people, which I got into recently, which is psychology. I came across this theory. It's called attachment theory. And attachment theory in psychology finds its roots in the pioneering work of John Bowley. I don't know if I said his name right. I probably butchered it, but um, I'm not really good with names. <laughs> but John was a psychiatrist at a child guidance clinic treating numerous emotionally troubled children. And through his experiences, there he understood the significance of a child's relationship with their mother, shaping their emotional and social and cognitive thinking. And I find that really important. And I want to add a side note that says, and I came across this, but critical thinking begins from the ages five and nine. And that's really important because I used to give people the benefit of the doubt because I made the mistake of trying to see myself in them and I get hurt, right? But after I figured that out and came across this information, I'm like, you know what? People are clearly, clearly thinking about what they're doing before they're doing it. And I used to give them the benefit of the doubt, which only in long term got me in trouble, right? Because I projected myself onto them and you can't always do that. So now that we have a little bit of background, Let's get into the attachment behavioral system. Okay, the attachment behavioral system deals with the tendency of an individual to seek security during times of stress. Okay, and this can be in internal and external environments. Okay, the more stress, the more intense the attachment system is activated. The system is activated in the first five years of life. Okay, and this is very important. It's activated in the first five years of life because this is a period categorized by high levels of vulnerability and dependency. And this is important because this tendency can follow you into adulthood. And this is where it gets dangerous. Okay. And I wouldn't have came across this if I didn't take the time to do self self reflection myself and to better my self improvement and development. Now, by the way, these two are completely different. Self improvement is knowledge, finding more knowledge about yourself in the world and self development is behavior, right? So that's how you differentiate, differentiate, this is how you decide from one to another. Okay. So once the system is activated, said person is motivated to seek proximity to a significant other. Okay. Now this can be any attachment figure that you deem necessary, right? A boyfriend, a girlfriend, father, a mother, right? And this is, it gets real deep because this is where that, that inner work comes in that, but once the system is activated, said person is motivated to seek proximity to a significant other, right? To protect themselves from emotional and physical harm. Once the goal is activated, the system becomes deactivated, right? But let me ask you a question. What if the goal isn't activated or what if the, what if the goal isn't achieved? Okay. What happens if the system isn't deactivated? Okay. How many people have we lost due to an unconscious behavioral system created before we could remember, right? And I get into this because like many people rely on others to comfort them. And it's, it gets dangerous because what happens if you fail to remedy a relief, you know? And I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. But how many men and women have suffered from their significant other have suffered while their significant other enjoyed the company of somebody else because we failed to remedy proximity to a problem we didn't even know existed. 
something to think about, you know. But one question I used to ask myself is, how come I didn't discover this earlier? How come we didn't discover this earlier? And that's because it's easier to blame somebody else, right? But when you've been on the receiving end of this for so long, you start to, once you go through enough pain for any individual, I think you begin to do the inner work where you try to figure out what their problem is or who their problem actually is. Okay. How many times will you seek security in a relationship in times of stress? You know, how many times will you do that? And how many times does a person get not to be there before you seek proximity somewhere else? You know, because what if this person doesn't even know what the problem is? Most likely they won't, but are you even giving that person a sad chance to be there? Now, I've ran into this mistake a lot in, my, in, in, in the past, like, because we all have things to do on this planet, all of us. We're all, we're all doing something or something needs to be done. So everybody on the planet has a task, okay? And how many, well, not how many, just because, and this is where I found out what the problem is, because, you know, after you go through a lot, you kind of self-reflect on all the things you could have done better, right? And I want to give you my advice, you know, or just say my piece. Because somebody... Because just because you communicate it, and I've said this before, but just because you communicate it doesn't mean you communicate it clearly. Right. But, you know, these are just some questions to think about. But how can somebody fix a problem when you don't even know what the problem is? All the other person can do is provide an aesthetic that would only reduce discomfort because the problem is self surface level, right? And what I found out is like, you know, people say this a lot, like if he would, if he would, I mean, if he, if he cared, he would, or if he, if whatever they say, you know, about if he wanted to, he would, if she wanted to, he would, I believe it. And this is my opinion that that's just another person blaming somebody else because the failure to provide security within yourself. Until we get an accurate handle on our own agonies, we will forever be condemned to suffer in our symptoms. Right. And that was me making the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again. Right. And I was dealing with the same problems. I was dealing with the same problems and I didn't see anything changing. Right. But after I said enough is enough and we all will get to that point where, you know, we're like, I've had it. I've had it. You know, when you go and I heard a guy say this before and it's so accurate, like once you've been through enough pain, then that's when you're going to change. That's when you're going to change instead of blaming the next person. If you want something that's successful involving a relationship, then this is the inner work is something that you're going to have to be doing. Because I believe now that you don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. And it took me a long time to realize that and a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you know, but all of us. All of us are victims at some point acting on unfound, confused schemes, having no foundation or basis in the fact until we do our own due diligence on our inner work. Right. We all we're all going to make the same mistake over and over and over again until we realize what until we realize and until we find in, a, in a, until we find an accurate handle on our own agonies. And I believe that's when it's going to change, because I, I, don't, I really don't believe that you're going to be invited to somebody's life. And you're just emotionally, physically, spiritually not ready for that person. Because at the end of the day, that's what a relationship is. It's spiritual to a certain extent, right? So, and another reason why nobody does self-reflection is because I feel like everybody wants to be heard and we've been oppressed for so long. 
right? Everybody wants to be heard. But it's really not about that, right? But just to get back on subject, the behavior system remains important throughout life because it's it also motivates adults to seek proximity in times of stress, right? But we must and what I'm getting to is you we must we must deactivate that infant that infant that infant attachment system by promoting a feeling of security within ourselves. And when I say that, I mean, don't look for somebody else to provide relief or to make you happy or somebody to cause you to be sad, right? I think to a certain extent that we all have control over that. And when we rely on somebody else to provide relief, what if they fail? What if they don't come through? Right, because I know I was in I was in a time before where I relied not relied but I counted on somebody and that's when they that's when they that's when they kick you that when well when at the time when I relied on somebody the most is the time that I was just probably most disappointed they just didn't come through right and that was probably the last time that I'll make that mistake you know so. Yeah. Yeah, we just we just can't rely on others, you know, to to remedy relief because failure to do so will cause the following attachment styles. Right. And I didn't even know about this until this year. Right. But I did my own due diligence and I did my research. Right. But you have the anxious attachment style, you know, where and this is really important because and let me break this down, because this this one concerns it's concerning because. You're concerned that others will not reciprocate your desire for intimacy. Can you only imagine going into a relationship with somebody who has an anxious attachment style? Like, they don't even believe what you're doing is for them. They're probably pessimistic to your intentions the entire relationship because they cannot believe they're with you. It's insane. Saying that out loud and hearing it out loud. <laughs> you know, another one is the avoidant. I don't even know anything about the avoiding attachment style. Right. And the avoiding attachment style is they avoid interaction. Right. Which is obvious. But they internalize. They internalize the belief that they cannot depend on any relationship. Right. Because because they were ignored. Attempts to be intimate in the past. That's heavy. That's heavy. Right. And then you also have separation anxiety. That's another one. Right. And then you have, you know, trust wounds. Right. You're afraid to be hurt. That's a lot of people, if not most of every. That's pretty much everybody. Right. Almost. Almost. Right. And this one is pretty bad because. You find a way not to trust somebody. You're looking for ways not to trust somebody. That's a lot of damage. I don't know what that person been through, but that's a lot of damage, right? Mm, 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 mm. And then that falls with abandonment wounds, right? You feel left out. You're codependent. And you threaten to leave. I've, I've seen a lot of people who, you know, had... I've seen a lot of people who threaten to hold their relationships over their partner's heads. And I, I, I believe I've seen way too much to, to probably get back on the dating market. I, I feel like at this point now, I probably renunciated my position in the dating market. And so like this gets better because this is ridiculous. Right. But it's all it's all subjective. And it also comes down to a level of discernment per individual. Right. And then you have neglect wounds. Right. Neglect wounds. And this is being afraid, fear, fearful of being vulnerable. Okay. And, or you struggle to let things go. I actually struggle with that. I struggle to let things go. I struggle to let things, let things go that no longer serve me. Right. But that's because in the past I've given people the benefit of the doubt. Like to this day, I still don't believe such and such to do that. And it's right there in my face. Right. Because I like, nah, cause I wouldn't do it. So I wouldn't believe they wouldn't do it. That got me caught up. <laughs> that would get you in. That will put you directly in the danger zone. 
and I actually know a couple of people who deal with that, right? But until you can let go, I don't think you're ready for somebody else. I don't think you should be talking to anybody else or moving into a relationship anytime soon. And this stuff takes time, right? And I always tell people this too. If you, once you have that little girl, if you're dating a female and you have that little girl, she, you get a hold of that little girl inside of her, you got her. And then vice versa for the man. If you can get a hold of that little man, then you got him. I've come across my discovery that people don't even mature past the age, mentally, past the age of 13. There's <laughs> so much information out there, and I really recommend people to get out there and take a look for themselves and to improve your self-improvement because it'll save you. It'll save you. I don't – it wouldn't save – it's not going to save you from the pain. That's not going to happen, but it'll prepare you for it. It'll prepare you for it because no matter what, you know, a lot of guys out here with this red pill content, you know, telling men how to talk to women and what they do and don't deserve – and and all this all of this other bs look these men can tell you this all day long but at the end of the day you still gonna get hurt right it's still gonna happen to you so when it comes to people that you choose to be in your life i would say my advice to go off go off if you still choose to be on the dating market i would say go off of vibrational connection and you know what that means. All of you guys who watch this podcast are very intelligent. All of you, right? I would go off of a rational connection. Doesn't matter what she looks like. Does it feel right? If it doesn't feel right, keep it moving. And if you do end up talking to her, I recommend now that you meet her parents in the first month. Don't have to turn into your girlfriend or boyfriend, but I think that's very important for both of y'all to save y'all self pain. I think that's important to be introduced to the parents. Not on something serious, but go to dinner or something like that. Don't have to come over to the house and introduce them, but like go to dinner, something small, you know, and let them decide because they know better than we all do. But it depends on how old you are at the same time. If you're grown, don't worry about it. It's not for you. Like if you're grown, grown, like you taking care of yourself. But if you potty somebody in your, you know, early teens or teens, early 20s, possibly, you know, you probably still at home. I would get my advice from them because they those the, your parents are have your best interest. And they've been through it. They've been through it all. So they'd be able to tell you. They'd be able to tell you, right? And a lot of people make the mistake because they don't have the proper guidance growing up. A lot of fathers didn't have these conversations with men about women, and a lot of mothers didn't have it either. And I feel like what I see now is that you're trying to make this person into the person you never had, right? So something to think about. You know, that's something to think about. So, you know, it's a dangerous game out there, fellas. You know, so a lot of people say, a lot of people say, you know, you know, get to the money and build yourself up and this, that, and third. But listen, once you get there, because money is not everything, once you get there, you won't even know. You're going to be in the same pool as women. You won't know who is there for what. You're going to have an abundance of options, just like women have an abundance of options. They don't know what guys come into their life to do, cause destruction or to spread positivity. You don't know. You don't know until you know, right? But, you know, you people think – and I, I'm, I'm staying on topic. People think that once you get there, it'll solve all your problems. It won't. <laughs> it will not. It will not. So I don't know. It just all depends on, you know, why you want money. I've come across men who want money to control. But they want to control the situation, right? And then you have men who want money to serve others. And I've I've been blessed to hang around men who want to serve others. I see what it looked like. Just the other day, you know, I was in line at Panera Bread. And this this girl had asked me, Nobody ever asked me this question before. So when she asked me, I was like, oh, she asked me and I'll, I'll go there every day. She asked me if I wanted for my what I wanted for my side. And she gave me options. I didn't know you had options on your sides. And I was like, you know, what? you're the first girl to tell me that. And she was like, what? She was surprised. And then the guy was the guy I was with. He was like, nobody ever asked us that and tipped her, tipped this girl two hundred dollars. 
just because she asks a question that nobody else asks us. I'm like, that stuff right there is inspirational to me. Made her day, made her week. And then now when we go in there, she look for us and she holds a simple conversation. Make sure we're taken care of. But it's just things like that. Like, why do you want money? And then just go off that checklist. I know I want it, right? But that's different for everybody at the same time. So, you know, I I recommend as a man, because relationships or the relationships you build is more important than money. Money come and go. Money goes where it's invited and stays where it's welcome. You know, so, and all money ain't good money at the same time. So it's it's about the relationships that you build. That's most important to me. Because without, like, that's the structure that I go off of, which is why I, my advice to you is to find a good woman because it's easier to find a good woman than it is to find a good man. And that's just reality of it, right? I could be wrong, but there's more women out here that I've seen that are willing to stick it through thin, stick it through with you through thick and thin at the bottom of the mountain and at the, at the top of the mountain and at the bottom of the mountain, right? And a lot of men go out here and they, a lot of men go out here and, and put their opinions on the dating market. They put their own negative opinions on the dating market of what they think isn't out there because of what they've been through. That's very immature of you. And women, women are guilty, guilty of this too. So as long as you keep saying that and manifesting that, that's all you're going to track. Period. It's just as simple as that. But my advice, and it's take it as it resonates, find somebody who was with you before you get all of that. Because if when you have them, you know why they're really there. I know women who put up with stuff that they shouldn't only because the man that they're with provides security and survival. Right. And then vice versa for the man, because you got men out here dating older and women are taking care of them. I've seen it. It's out there. It's out there. So, and like I said, you're going to attract what you are, not what you want. <laughs> and that's just it, you know. So, I got. I want you guys to take this message as it resonates with you. Um, and give me your feedback. Let me know if you want more content like this on psychology. I'm very fluent in, psych in psychology. I'm also very fluent in business acquisitions. I'm also fluent in contract law. I'm also fluent in image consolidation. I'm f fluent in a lot of areas. So you guys let me know what you guys need from me, and I'll take it from there. So, you know, I'm, I'm also fluent in common law, debt law, all type of things. I have so much information, I don't even know where to start, right? But I do know if I speak to everybody, I'm not speaking to, if I speak to everybody, I'm not speaking to anybody. So I'm trying to get an accurate handle on this platform so that I can provide as maximum value to you guys as, as, as much as I can, because that's what's most important to me, day in and day out. It's showing up for y'all. <laughs> so I would really much appreciate it if you guys could leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, I mean, let me know what you guys want. So I can make that guy, I can make that happen for you. If not, I know plenty of people. I'm very resourceful. I know plenty of people that can get you taken care of. So I will be starting my image consolidation packages very soon. I'm getting that organized now. Also, I'm going to be having a platform for the podcast. So I'm going to be starting subscription soon. So I want to be able to make sure I'm speaking to a specific audience so I can provide maximum value, right? But I think you guys would be really, I think what will help you guys the most is definitely consumer law because that's the foundation of success to me, to me, based off my journey. So, and I can show you what to do, how to do it, and who to connect you to, right? So that's, that's pretty much all I have for today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I appreciate you guys for your time and attention and <laughs> you guys have a great day.